Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we are talking about how you open up the door to the devil. Mm. Some individuals, they don't realize that that's what they do at the workplace, at the home front. Even when they open up their car door and give someone a ride home. When they open up the storefront doors, oh, if only I knew that the devil was coming in. If only I had not showed up that day. If only I hadn't given someone something. Maybe these issues would have never showed up. We open up the door in different ways. I want to show you what that looks like. And I want to give some individuals the type of information that they will utilize in such a way where they will not be so open, so giving, so naive, so foolish. When I opened up the door years ago to the devil, I opened up my conversation. That was the first mistake. I opened up my deepest, most private thoughts. I opened up my legs. I opened up an atmosphere for the devil to walk in that led to the demonic showing up in the presence of my family members. You do these sorts of things and you think that this person is not going to do this or say that. And, you know, they're a good person. They're a nice person. Can I tell you that for some of you all, you open up the door to the devil just in your head nodding in your agreeable emojis in the meetings that you have where you know people say real disrespectful things and yet it's okay it's all right I mean it's no big deal I don't want to be viewed as sensitive oh we can open up the door to the devil in so many ways some folks they think that it's all about well you know that's the spiritual right That doesn't apply to me because I'm not a believer. I'm not into God like that. I'm not religious. I'm not. But you can open up the door just in your unbelief, in your disregard, in your that's not my business. Oh, I'm coming where some of you all are because in the spiritual realm, you do a lot of that opening up to the devil because the devil's fun. The children of darkness are cool. They're laid back. They're my kind of people, some of you all say. Are they really? As you get to know some individuals, you realize that the straight shooter may also be the straight liar. And the one who says that they like to keep it real can be the fakest one in the room. The one who says that I never (laughs) is the one that's always. You see, we open up these conversations to individuals thinking that It's going to be business as usual, thinking that we're going to have the type of individuals around us that we can be able to learn something from, glean information, you know, uh, uplift us, do the types of things that will help us. And then you find out the hard way or the easy way that this person is nothing more than the devil. That wolf in sheep's clothing, that person that you think about that comes to mind that God has reminded you that this one is not one that you want to take lightly. That one that you were told a long time ago to stop opening up your wallet. Hmm. You can open up this journey with a demonic entity through the money even. The individual comes and says, hey, you know, I need this, I need that. You say, okay, and you give them. And then they come back, oh, I need this, I need that. I mean, some of your children, grandchildren. And you give and you give and you give. And then after a while, you say, you know what? This is enough. You're going to have to earn. I've done more than enough for you. Oh, now 
that opens up a Pandora's box of emotion. They're either crying or yelling or they're giving you, you know, a long speech or, you know, I don't like you and you should have done and whatever. And now this person who you thought was cool, wow, the devil done showed up in their eyes. This person that all along I have been helping you. I've been hooking you up and this is what you do. When they show you who they really are, believe it. Some of you all, you saw all sorts of things in media and you said, oh, I'm shocked. I can't believe that this person, sometimes the demonic sits back and waits for you to give he or she the invitation to come on in. You didn't know what the plan was, but the demonic said, oh, I got a plan. You thought it was just business as usual. You see, you have individuals around you that they think that, for instance, a holiday event, it's just business as usual. We're just going to get together. It's going to be kumbaya. Everybody's going to be cool. We're going to grill. We're going to play some music. You know, somebody's going to be watching a game. We're going to touch base, you know, catch up on whole, um, on old times. And instead, what you get is foolishness, fights, gaslighting abusive speech. I was just joking. I did an audio message some years back talking about these folks that say, oh, I was just joking. You can look that up on my channel. Uh-huh. There's a lot said in a joke. And when you are that kind of person that sits back and you say, oh, it's okay. It's all right. Uh-huh. You just opened up a place for the devil to walk on in, in conversation. Oh, but you said it was okay. See, because when they called you a name, it's okay. When they said something stereotypical or disrespectful or whatever, mm, it's okay. When they asked you, is it okay that I say these words? What they were really doing was they were giving you or testing you out, I should say. They were testing you out to see what you're made of. What you'll tolerate. Is it okay? Is it alright? And then you know that this goes against what your personal beliefs are. And you said, mm, okay. You didn't take a stand. You didn't draw the line in the sand. You didn't establish boundaries. And so that's why this person feels like it's okay to disrespect you. Whether they're young or old, doesn't matter. Because when you don't draw the line in the sand and you allow individuals to say whatever and do whatever, they're going to, <laughs> they're going to take advantage. They're going to go all in. They're going to catch you on an off day. And then that's when you're going to want to raise a standard. You're going to want to draw the line in the sand. And they're going to say, oh, why are you so upset? Because back when I told you, or back when I asked you, you said it was okay. You act like it was cool. Oh, now you want to act brand new. Mm -hmm. Our God, our awesome, wonderful, loving, sweet, kind, but just God, our God who will avenge us, says if you can just make things just a little easier for yourself by establishing boundaries early on, I can be able to help you with these other issues as they arise. If you could just be transparent in what you want from individuals early on in the conversation, then I can come in and say, using you, this is uncomfortable for me. No, I don't think this is a good idea. No, I will not, I will not allow that sort of conversation and whatever else that it is that your heart so desires when communicating with individuals, when interacting with individuals. I don't want to spend my money anymore, so close up the wallet. I don't want to go to this person's house any longer because I don't like what they do over there. Then stop going over there. I, I, you know, I, I don't want to keep opening up my door to my neighbor because see my neighbor, every time they come over, they do this, they do that. They take this, they take that. They give me a guilt trip or whatever. Then stop opening up your door. I don't want to keep riding her in my car. I don't necessarily like, you know, this, that, and the other, or she smells funny or she talks weird or whatever else. Then close your door. It doesn't make you a bad person because you establish boundaries. 
It doesn't make you a bad parent because you look your child in the face and you say, all before, yes, I did allow you to do certain things, but now I'm not allowing you to do certain things. And you know there's going to be pushback. You know there's going to be attitudes. You know they're going to come up here and talk this and talk that and whatever else. Because you learn every day what works and what doesn't work, don't you? When we're establishing a rapport with individuals, right? Oh, you know, I want to come across as this person or that person. One thing about it, there are still people who have their biases. There's still people that it can take one wrong word, one wrong location. You supported the wrong sports team. And then the next thing you know, all hell breaks loose. And now you done lost a cell. You see? You got to be guarded. You got to be guarded with with some people. I know for some of you all, you know, you want to be the open book and you want people to be an open book with you. But honey, (laughs) we aren't in heaven. We're dealing with flawed, weak, challenged, difficult, dysfunctional, crazy making, abusive types of individuals every day. Even if we're not talking to them. Lord Jesus. Because people can put a negative energy out in the atmosphere that can change your very existence. Can cause you to start looking old. Can start making you feel like you don't want to live any longer. Just by opening up your heart, your words. The Lord says we're supposed to Guard our heart. I want to be that person that gives you a good experience, but mm, I feel some negative energy from you. So I'm going to have to take back, Lord Jesus, all of my openness. Mm. Sometimes you learn this sort of thing midway in a conversation. You started off, yes, I think this is my kind of person. I'm just going to tell them this and tell them that, you know, exchange some information. Hmm, seems like so far they're real good, you know, about receiving me and receiving what I have to offer. And then suddenly uh, there's something different in that conversation. I've got to change my communication. I can't necessarily talk to this person in the way that I want to talk to them because I'm realizing that. They're forming personal judgments or they are leaking some information about who they really are. Mm, I am seated in the presence of the devil. What does it take for some individuals to realize that we have an awesome God that got our back? There's a song that I like. It's one of my favorites. It's a song called So Will I, 100 Billion X. It's by Hillsong Worship. It's by Hillsong on their uh, on their uh, channel, and you can find their song on uh, YouTube. But the lyrics of that song reminds me of the power of an Almighty God that even in small communication, He shows up and shows up strong. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time, with no point of reference. Listen to this. You spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. And as you speak, A hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath The planets form If the stars were made to worship So will I Now what am I leading to? I'm leading to In the very presence of the devil, in my mind, I am praising the one true God. I realize that I opened up my heart. Mistake. I realize that I opened up 
my atmosphere, mistake. I realize that I welcome the devil at my table, mistake. I'm going to redirect my thought process that's on the devil to the one true God. Thank you for showing me who he or she really is. I give honor and praise to you who are almighty. You were there at the start. Ooh, Lord Jesus, you were there at the start of this communication. You were there at the start of this holiday celebration. You were there at the start before I even showed up. You already knew that I was going to encounter the demonic. You already knew that I was going to make this mistake. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, don't you want an almighty God? And almighty God to be there, right there in the presence of where your mistake is. Because some of us, we realized what our mistakes were a long time ago. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. If the stars were made to worship. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I've got to redirect my attention off of this worldly situation. And I've got to look to this God that is bigger than me. This God that created communication. This God that created this man or woman seated before me that's riddled with demons. He cares about this individual, but I've got to resist this demonic entity, this being that is within the human being so that he can flee. Yes, I recognize that we love our enemy, but we don't have to sit down and break bread with our enemy. Come on, somebody get free, get free right now, get free right now. We don't have to keep making mistakes with our enemy. We don't continue to sin. Oh, I went to the Lord and I said, Lord Jesus, I messed up. He said, don't continue to sin. Real simple. He's the same God <laughs> that he was back when he talked to the woman at the well. Oh, Jesus. Hmm. You don't continue to sin. Now that I recognize who my Judas is, now that I recognize that there's an enemy among the camp, now that I recognize that I cannot continue to be in that family setting, all of these things that I see, I'm at this workplace and I see this foolishness and that. You don't give place to the enemy. You don't, even if you haven't sinned just yet, you don't want to put yourself in a position to sin. Our almighty God, Lord Jesus, somebody is getting free. I can feel in the spirit. You're recognizing it. It's coming together. You've listened to enough audio now that you are getting stronger and stronger. And don't you realize, don't you realize that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Or do you realize that by now? The demonic doesn't want you to realize your truth, your light, your strength, your communication that sets boundaries that says, no, I will not put up with. I don't care if your mother, father, sister, brother, cousin, aunt, uncle, grandmother, grandfather, I will not. I don't care if your manager, investor, the person who built the business, the person who signs the check, what have you, I will not. And then you fill in the blank, whatever that knot is. I will stop. See, we're going to turn the negative back on them. Oh, don't be negative because I'm establishing boundaries. Oh, don't say that because I'm establishing boundaries. Oh, why do you have to? See how individuals are? They'll flip the script because you realize where they're coming from. The enemy doesn't want you to see the truth. The enemy doesn't want you to see how these sorts of things play out. Because let's just say that you go ahead and you continue to sin and you continue to go along with the program. 
you continue to say, yeah, it's okay. It's all right. I don't want them to see me as sensitive, right? What's going to happen is eventually the demonic shows up and tests you. Now, the thing is, is that if we already see that the demonic is going to eventually do that sort of thing, then I'm working on my speech. I'm working on my speech right now. I'm saying, okay, when you show up and you say what you're going to say and do what you're going to do, I'm going to take the mirror and I'm going to hold it up in front of you. And then I'm going to let you know that what you're saying and what you're doing is why you can't establish the relationship with the individuals that you want to establish a relationship with. This is why you can't make the money that you want to make the money because your communication sucks. <laughs> Sometimes you got to meet the worldly right where they are. Eh, you know, I mean, I really want to help you, but at the end of the day, you have poor communication skills. You're not much of a leader. I don't even know how they put you in this position. You know, I mean, why they even did it? I mean, you know, I don't know why they're opening up these doors, these opportunities for people like you. I mean, really, the, you see, they don't want to hear that. The demonic doesn't want to hear that. Of course not. But sometimes you got to meet people right where they are in their worldliness and tell them where their failures are. Because see, the demonic doesn't mind sitting down and telling you about your failures. The demonic, though, assumes that because I'm in a title, I'm protected. And if you say something to the demonic that doesn't uplift and make them feel special, then you're marked and then they call you insubordinate or they say that you're the black sheep of the family or they don't want you around or this one's a liar or this one is a, abusive that, you know, they'll come up with all sorts of things because you brought the truth. You shine that light on darkness. The God that is in you, the God that created you. You spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. Mm. You mean to tell me that God, he can set us up for situations like this? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the news that some folks in listening to this message, what, what am I expected to go through in the future? A falling out, a falling out with a demonic individual, someone who thinks that he or she can be able to break you down, someone who will dangle a carrot over your head and hope that you'll go after it, someone who has repeatedly got you to open up legs and heart and everything else. So now you're going to open up the car door and you're going to let me drive that car. And you're going to open up that uh, house by making me an extra key. Oh, I'm coming real close. I can feel in the spirit so that I can come on in. And that lazy man or lazy woman is going to prop their feet up and expect you to cook and clean and run errands and take care of kids and do some things. This is somebody's truth. Some of you all, you're just bystanders. That doesn't apply to me. Ooh, thank God. <laughs> I've already been there, done it, seen the movie. Because some of my listeners, they've been there, but they got out. But some of you all, you still have yet to get out. Some of you all, you're about to go where the devil is. Opening up that heart again lord jesus didn't god tell you didn't you learn the last time mm, i guess not some folks another opportunity opening up your lord jesus opening up your email and filling out the paperwork and it's another bust it's another job that you don't want sit back and take the time out Let's reevaluate 
Let's see. Is this going to be an atmosphere where the demonic is? Okay, let me look at the job description. Let me see. There's some things in here, the way the verbiage is, that tells me that this is one of those businesses that has high turnover. Let me look at the next <laughs> job description. Okay, maybe the job isn't what I need. Maybe it's a break that you need so that you can be more discerning about where your next move is going to lead you. Maybe for some, it's about being the business owner or it's about building the business from the ground up. Whatever the case may be, you know that you cannot open your heart, your mind, your spirit, your legs, your anything to someone, to some group. You're tired of being used. You're tired of being abused. Some other individuals, your job these days is to speak to those who keep making these mistakes, who keep going down a rabbit hole. The demonic is a charmer. A lot of people like the demonic. The demonic isn't always ugly. <laughs> the demonic can pass as a friend, as a confidant, as someone loving, kind, and sweet, and then turn on you. Someone who says, I'm going to give you a positive review, and then instead gives you a negative review. Someone who says that I trust you, I care for you, and then you find out through family members that that person doesn't trust you, care for you, never really liked you, always had an issue with you when the issue was really with them. They didn't get what they wanted. God didn't bless them with what they wanted. Some people were jealous, right? Some of you all, you ran across these individuals and you wanted to have that open dialogue. Let's sit at the table and find out what's really happening with you. Why do you have a problem with me? And what did they do? They went around and around. They blame, they shame, they name call. No, let's get to the root of the issue. It's too hurtful. It's too painful. They don't want to do that. When them demons are guarding that person's mind, body, and spirit, they don't want to do that. They don't want to get to the root cause of anything. Psychologists and psychiatrists and doctors and teachers and counselors and ministers, they know all too well. You sit down with an individual you're asking them questions and they start looking at you with that evil look. You start telling them about what they did wrong and they start becoming very defensive. Some folks will even threaten you physically. All right, now you're getting too close to the truth. Now you're getting too close to the truth. Well, what you want me to <laughs> feed into the lie? The truth hurts. We get it. We know our God brings these sorts of things out into the atmosphere because he doesn't want us to be led astray. He doesn't want us to continue to support, to entertain, to be a part of the devil's acts, misdeeds. People signed on a dotted line in blood for the devil. The devil said, I got some tricks. I got some treats. The devil said, I got some love for you, which was nothing more than abuse and trauma. The devil showed up and said, I'm going to give you everything. And all you have to do is. The devil approached Jesus. Some of you all, you recall in the scriptures, the devil was given or willing to give Jesus everything. But then he turns around and he wants you to destroy yourself too. Well, how are you going to get everything if you're a dead man exactly or a dead woman? The intention was never to give you that demonic entity that was within that parent, that grandparent, the sister, the brother, the cousin, or what have you. The intention was never to give you anything. 
not their time, their love, their affection, their anything. They were so riddled with demons from yesteryear and for some people even in this very moment. So if they're riddled with demonic entities and you're aware of this, then why would you open up your door? If they're filled with their share of abuses and traumas and they don't want to get the help that they need, then why are you playing counselor when you know that you're ill-equipped to be somebody's counselor? Amen. <laughs> we lead people to the water, but we can't drink the water for them. I tell you that the devil's in the room, but I'm not going to sit there with you where the devil is. Mm -mm. Some people say, well, you got to be my brother's keeper. Not in the devil's atmosphere. I'm not. I'm there to take you out of the devil's atmosphere. I'm not there to say, okay, I'm going to sit there at the club and I'm going to get my groove on right along with you. When I know that God brought me out of that atmosphere. So, for instance, if I'm going into the club atmosphere, I'm going to pull that person out. I might dance my way out the door, <laughs> but we coming out of this thing. You see, and some of you all, this is what your calling is. You need a confirmation to stay. This is what your calling is. Your calling is not about sitting there typing in front of a computer. Or picking up a phone. Your calling is to be in an atmosphere where you're pulling people out of their troubles. Your calling is to get people to open up in such a way where we're going to deal with the demonic. And that might require a deliverance ministry where we're casting out demons because Jesus followers have the same gifting as Jesus himself. In the mighty name of Jesus, we cast out the demonic. Whatever is in the atmosphere that's attacking your mind, that's telling you that truth is in truth and to believe the lie, we come against it in Jesus' mighty name. Everything that is binding an individual from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. We're asking that the Lord release them from the trouble. We're asking that God will see them through their difficult situation. That God will break the chains of dysfunction. The chains of addiction in all its forms. In Jesus' name, somebody needs to give praise and honor to the one true God because when you're looking at the devil too long, it can be tempting and the next thing you know, you're going down the left-hand path. So we just redirect our attention once we see the things that God wants us to see now. Oh, Heavenly Father, I give you honor, I give you praise. Once again, coming back to that God of creation who was there at the start. Before the beginning of time. With no point of reference. Hallelujah. You spoke to the dark. And fleshed out the wonder of light. And as you speak. A hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath. The planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. That's all God wants in your trial, in your challenge, is for you to worship him in spirit and in truth. I, oh, heavenly father, worship you. I praise you. I honor you. I realize that the devil is at my feet. He is not the head. You, oh, heavenly father, are the head. You are the one, Lord Jesus, who sees what the devil is doing. You are the one, Lord Jesus, who can bring me out of this foolishness. You are the one that can send a man packing. Ooh, Lord Jesus, and a woman running. You, oh, heavenly father, are the great I am. You, oh, heavenly father, are my shepherd. You, oh, heavenly father, I am nothing without you. 
we're raising up the energy right now in our praising and our worshiping. The vibrational energy around you. You are opening up God's presence. You are seated at God's feet as you praise and honor and worship him. So many individuals so quick to open up everything to the demonic. And the Lord says, when have you opened up to me? When have you talked to me about what really is bothering you? My grandmother used to ask me, she said, what's going on? And I would say, oh, you know, everything's good. You know, my kids, whatever. She said, "Uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. What's really going on? That's my question for you. That's what God is asking you in his presence. What's really going on? I don't want, I don't want to see or hear about whatever you tell the world to make you look good. I want to hear about the ugly in and around. That's what I'm after. When will you get honest with me? What was the reasoning for opening up to the demonic? Is it because you don't have enough attention from a partner, a spouse? What was the real reason for opening up your legs to that individual? Was it because it's been a long time? But you know how God feels about some things. What is the truth? about why you are so accepting of demonic conversation, worldly foolishness. Is it because you just wanna fit in as old as you are? (laughs) You haven't learned? I thought you learned that lesson in the sixth grade, in the eighth grade, back in college. Why does a man or a woman open up to the demonic? You have to know what your why is. And then once you realize your why, you say, I'm not. I won't. I refuse. Today, I build a fortress around myself. To keep the enemy at bay, I will resist the devil and he or she will flee. I will no longer sin. This is where God is meeting some of you all. And this is where the demonic wants to keep you from getting to. He don't want you to know the truth about yourself or anybody else. And so... We've exposed some areas of one's life that some individuals didn't want to face. And so when you feel like you're that one that's going through a lot, this is where your counselors are supposed to come in and help you. And we're not talking about family members and friends. Because many of them didn't do a good job. They don't have the expertise. We're talking about individuals seeking help in their local community. Those individuals who have a reverence for their creator, seeking counseling from them. Not just anybody and everybody, because when it's a spiritual issue, you need spiritual counselors. When it's a spiritual issue, You need the one true God, the doctor of all doctors. Now, when it's a physical issue, you've got to pray and ask the Lord to lead you to the right doctor. To the right medicine man, if you will. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Glory be to the one true God. Let us take this moment of silence. And this moment of silence is for those individuals who we lost as a result of opening up their doors.
to evil men and evil women. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us. Times where we could have lost our lives behind some demonic foolishness. Thank you. You kept us here for reasons beyond our understanding. Reveal to us what it is that we need to do to draw closer to you, to do what you have called us to do, to give us the courage, the bravery to do what you've called us to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Bless the listener. Bless the listener, O oh, Heavenly Father for them giving of their time to listen to these messages, their money, their energy. Bless them. Bless them. I thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube, NM Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel. And thank you.